Hey folks, my name is Yannick and welcome to Tutorial to You. And in this video, I want to give you a brief introduction into Microsoft's Entity Framework. Now, I want to keep it as short as possible because your time is valuable. So let's get started right away. First of all, we need to install two packages, Entity Framework Core and Entity Framework Core dot in memory. So for this scenario right here, for this test project, we don't want to use a real SQL database. This is why we use an in memory database. So as soon as we start the application, a small database will get created in our memory. And as soon as we shut down the application, the database is gone, right? So, but everything what we're doing is really very, very simple to configure with a real SQL database. And we also have a video on that. I will just get back to it later. So install both of them if you want to follow along now. Inside of my program, it's just a simple console application in .NET 7. I have a class which is called purchase. That purchase object contains an ID, a product, string, and a decimal for the price. Now this should be a table in our database, right? Just think of it like an SQL database and you have a table with all of your purchases. And then you have three columns, ID, product, and price, right? So what is Entity Framework doing just, let's just sum it up real quick. Entity Framework is an ORM, an object relational mapper. And basically what it is doing is like it takes away the headache that we get from writing and connecting to an SQL database from and in C sharp. So we don't have to write down queries. We don't have to create any kind of SQL connection using a SQL client or whatever. We can simply install entity framework and let the magic happen because from that purchase class right here, Entity Framework will automatically generate tables. We don't have to care about the database structure inside of our SQL Server, for example, at all. We don't have to create even that database. It will get automatically created. The tables will get updated and patched and all of that, right? So we can really simply run and execute some simple C-Shop code and everything what's related to the SQL database to the MongoDB database or to whatever database, for this example, the in-memory one, will get automatically patched. So this is what Entity Framework brings to the table. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do it right now because you don't want to miss any of our upcoming c -sharp and .NET related videos, which help you become a better developer, earning more money, and getting the job done in a better way. And if you're really serious about your career and about your programming expertise, check out our C-Sharp Progress Academy. It teaches you full stack C-Sharp web development using ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing, and C-Sharp design patterns. Definitely the best way to progress as a C-Sharp developer. Check it out right now. You can find the link in the description below or popping up at the top right corner right now. And yeah, there is for sure 100% and yes, for sure, there's a 100% money back guarantee for 14 days. So give it a try. Now we already installed both of the uh, tools that we need, Entity Framework Core and Entity Framework Core in memory. So what should be your natural next step? Well, first of all, you should, as I said, create a class for your table. So if you want to have a table inside of your database, which contains cars, you would create a class car, you would add an ID for primary key, for example, you would add like a wheel count, you would add like a brand or whatever, maybe an age, whatever you're interested in, right? And then you create a class. Now, from that class, Entity Framework will create entities. For that, we will need a so-called DB context. So if we install the tools, we will get access to Entity Framework Core. And in that way, we also get access to the DB context class. So what I want to do is I want to create a custom database context, which contains all the tables that I want to have in my future, well, database. So what I'm going to do is I want to create a public class. I want to call it my DB context. You can call it however you like, and it's inherited from the DB context. That's very important. And you can see just in a second that we now automatically added Microsoft Entity Framework Core right here, DB context. Now think about what tables you want to have. For me, I have a purchase class. I want to have a purchase table containing all of the purchase records in my, well, which I want to save, right? So I'm going to create a property here, thread down prop, tap tap. The class that we want to use for that is called DB set. Let's add a type, type of purchase. And I want to give it a name. Usually you want to call it 
like your entity or like your class, like purchase and then purchase says because it's a table and it contains multiple records. So not car, it's cars or house, houses, person, people, and I guess you get the idea, right? So public database set, this creates a table in our upcoming database. Now there's one more thing that we have to do and that's very important, so pay attention now. We need to configure our database provider and this one differs depending on your future database type. So there is a, a method that we can override. So write down protected override void on configuring. And here we can provide a DB context options builder. There you go. Options builder, that's pretty default stuff. And the important part is inside here. So let's simply override it, right? No worries about that. Inside here, we can now configure a database provider. So if you want to use an SQL server, for example, you would go to your NuGet packages here. You would search for uh, Microsoft dot entity framework core. I just want to show it to you. Let's search for that entity framework core, I'm sorry. And you can see SQL Server here. If we search for that, you can install SQL Server. And in that way, you will get access to the methods that you need to configure an SQL Server. In that scenario, you would be able to call the options builder dot use SQL Server. Now for me, that's not possible because I want to use an in-memory database. But if you install that package, you would be able to configure an SQL Server connection here. Simply write down the connection string and now, as I already said, we already have a video on that, which is popping up right now. This is how you can create and connect to a database in ASP.NET Core. Anyways, ASP.NET Core for sure is also using the entity framework, right? So this is why it's a natural, like it's a good next step to, to watch this video anyway. We want to use an in-memory database because we don't want to be dependent on any SQL provider right now. I didn't want to set up any uh, real database. So we're going to use the in-memory database, which is also fine for testing purposes and all of that. So options builder dot use in-memory database. That's the method that we want to call. Open up the parentheses and inside here we can just provide the database name. So the name that we want to have for our database. Let's simply say our database is called like my db so nothing really special going on awesome so this is very important this configures our database provider and you have to do that if you don't do it you will run into an exception basically that exception or error will also tell you like please go ahead and configure a database provider but yeah that's how you do it awesome so now we want to start using our database let's create a scope let's write down using inside here we can create a var context and we create a new mydb context. So our database context that we have created right here, right? Now inside of that scope, we can now use the context, which is, well, our connection, or well, it's like an abstraction of our SQL or in-memory database or whatever, which we can now use. So we can modify that context, which is like our database. And once we call save changes on that context, we will save entities in our database save changes in our uh, database, delete records in our database and all of that. I will get to that now in a second. If you're using ASP.NET Core, for example, you would create that database context in your services so that they are for sure set up when your application starts and then, well, you can use the database the entire time. But for this video, where I only want to show you how to use Entity Framework without ASP.NET Core and all of that, just in a plain c -sharp console application, we need to create a scope so that we have a scope for the database context for sure. Great. Let's create a purchase, which we want to add to our database now. So var purchase equals to new purchase. There we go. Let's create an ID. We can simply say just for testing purposes, I set it to one. Then we got product name, let's say this is shoes. And then we have a price as a decimal, let's say 4995M. There we go. So we now have our product. So we now have created our .NET object purchase here. Now we want to save it. And for sure, this is our table DB set. We can put purchase objects into our purchase table. So we simply call our context 
And inside here, we will now have the tables. So I can simply search for purchases. There we go. You can see it's a DB set purchase, right? It's just that object here. So I'm going to say purchase dot add. So now I can call the entity framework methods to run our CRUD operations. For example, I can simply add an object. So add, there we go. And now, as I said, very important. This is just node. It's like a node and it will not be executed until you run context dot save changes, which is basically like, just imagine you have an, any kind of program and you write down something. And when you close the editor, everything is gone. So what are you doing? You simply hit control S to save the changes and it stays saved. This is basically what you have to do. You have to do it. This is not optional. You have to do it. All the changes are gone. Great. So now we should have um, a purchase object in our database. So an entity. So what I want to do is like, I really just want to show you the opposite side. I want to grab all objects. So var all purchases, for example, from our database. So I simply call the context dot purchases, which take a look here is again for sure our DB set and want to turn that uh, to a list. So give me all records from the database, put it in a list. Let me set a breakpoint here and let's start the application. So once the application starts, a new scope will get created. And inside of that scope, we can access our context because we are creating a new context, right? Then we add a purchase object to our table. And then afterwards, I just try to get all the information from that. You can see count one. Let's just open up that object here and you can see ID one price 49.95 product shoes. Awesome. So now you already have learned a lot of stuff. Naturally, what you for sure want to know about is not only the add method. There are some couple of other methods which I want to show you right now. But first of all, take a look at that one. This is how you can get all records. You simply go to context into your table, take that table and put it in a list or whatever you want to do to array. And there's so much more. You can also filter using where method and all of that. So let's get to that right now. Great. So let's ignore that what we got up here. And let's just focus on on that methods so that we can see here now. And the first one I want to show you is for sure remove. So you already know how to add a new purchase. So for our removing, we can simply go into the table and say remove, and then we can remove the record. So again, we would write down purchase here if we know which object to remove. Same goes for update. So if we say we want to update a purchase object, let's say the price was wrong. It wasn't 49. It was 89. I would simply get or grab that purchase object, adjust it, and then save it back. So for that, I would use the update method. Great. So this is CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete, right? Now I want to show you two more, which is first of default. So first of default. And in that way, we can write down a Lambda expression. If you have no clue about Lambda, check out the video, which is showing up right now. It's just four minutes. It will help you understand Lambda and C sharp. And what we want to do is we want to take every purchase just in take uh, think about purchase as a table with multiple records, maybe, even though we just have one right now, but we could have like a 1000. Let's say our product that we're getting here, or our purchase, purchase is equals to p goes to p dot uh, product, for example, it's the name of the product, right? And we want to select it by shoes. So please give me the first item that you can find the first record in the database that you can find, which has the product value set to shoes, that one. And I want to show you another one. Just keep that in mind. It's as I said, a brief introduction, where now we can filter, let's say where the product goes to P dot price is lower than, for example, 100 M. So give me all products where the price is lower than 100. And you can see we will get an I queryable, right? I queryable. And afterwards, we could turn that into a dot list, for example, to array and all of that. And again, if you don't know the difference between an I queryable and an I enumerable, we also have a video on that. So as you can see, we are really focusing on a lot of specific .NET content, which should be perfect and very interesting for you. Now, you don't have to name that P here, right? So this is just for me because I didn't want to call it purchase, but I can call it purchase record because that one's coming from the database. So this one is a .NET object and that one gets loaded from the database, right? So please give me all purchase records 
where the price is lower than 100. So there are a lot of more uh, methods which you want to use, but that's well too much in detail to count and name them and explain them all. But you should now have an amazing understanding of how you can get started with Entity Framework Core, how it basically works and why it saves us a lot of headache because we don't have to write any SQL queries here, right? That where could be an SQL query, but no, I can simply wrap it up in a basic line of c -sharp code, which is super easy for us c -sharp developers, right? And this is why Entity Framework is amazing. Thanks for watching. Definitely make sure to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and if you want to see any videos on that channel, any specific topics, please write them down into the comments below. And as I said earlier, if you take your c -sharp career serious, check out our c -sharp Progress Academy. Great. See you next time.